Guys, we just saw Jerry Thompson lose with one take on Mono Red. Kind of a, a burn-flavored take on Mono Red. Here's Tom Ross's take on the archetype, and Tom is the boss. The boss slide deck. He's been playing a lot of decks like this for a lot of years, and he's creeping heavy with two copies of Impact Tremors to try to give the deck a little bit of extra reach. You know, I was trying to think about it. Has Tom, since he's really started coming back to Magic, you know, he took a little break, uh, couple years ago, uh, has he played a deck that doesn't have a one-drop creature in it? He either plays <laughs> Mono Red, Heroic, or Infect. Those are the decks I can really recall him playing over this last year or two. No, that's fair. He's uh, definitely definitely a man who likes to beat down. His Infect deck, the two Pro Tours ago, the modern Infect deck, I felt like Pantheon had this... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it almost looks like they, they lucked into him in his Infect deck for that tournament and put up some really nice results. Well, it's the sort of thing when you're testing... Uh, I mean, not that Tom's like super one-dimensional. He does have a range of decks. They just all have one drops. But mm -hmm. when you're testing with someone who has a deck they really like, and it happens that that deck is good, that's a super valuable tool. It's like testing with Paul Rizzo when White Weenie's good, and then he wins the Pro Tour. <laughs> <laughs> so week one, Tom played Jeskai Tokens. He basically, I think he and Brad actually just traded decks uh, because they wanted to try to confuse their potential opponents. So Brad played Bant Heroic and Tom played Jeskai Tokens. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. I was like, kind of wondering how these two players ended up on those two decks, but that completely explains it. Yeah, they're roommates, right? Yeah. And they, yeah, they just traded decks. So well, yeah, no one drops in that one. I mean, there's Wild true. Stuff. That doesn't count. No, no, no. I, I'll give him a pass for that, except he also, it wasn't his deck. So <laughs> I believe my theory stays correct. Okay. <laughs> His was the his was the band heroic that Brad lost with. Yeah. All right, let's look at Owen's deck. Kind of the other side of the spectrum from a uh, tempo point of view. Yeah, I mean this is a controlling deck, but it has you know a couple different big engines. Uh, I think that given that Owen doesn't have, yeah, he doesn't have an insane game one against it, but I think his his sideboard is actually decent. It's a little better than Andrew's was. If Owen wins the die roll, you know, and gets lucky game one, he's a pretty big favorite, I would imagine. If he loses game one, it's pretty close, even even if Owen has a slight advantage post board games. Yeah, and we talked about this is 60 of the 61 cards that won the Grand Prix last weekend for Yuki Ichikawa. That one Tassiger was uh, was two Tassigers in uh, Ichikawa's hands in he Shanghai. Yeah, I'm going to ask Owen later uh, uh, what made him cut the Tasker. Maybe he didn't own a second Tasker, and so he had to cut it. Because I assume he would prefer to play the, the actual last that won the game. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that's what it was. All right, let's get down to it. We will change the pictures for you. Owen, currently number three ranked in the world. Tom Ross. Is he, I mean, you know, been working his way back onto the Pro Tour. Definitely had... Uh, a very impact a very big impact on the modern pro tour with his effect list that has not yet got himself up in the players club where he doesn't have to sweat every invite yet yes yeah, so, uh obviously I would, I would love to have tom back on the pro tour i, I mean I, I don't know if you know but the the deck that uh, i went 16-0 with in san diego was designed by tom it was boss naya and he went 9-1 with the deck in the pro tour and got in ninth place <laughs> i did not know that actually yeah so tom and i have tested together uh you know, it worked out pretty well for, well when we did. Sure. Yeah, it was actually a weird spot where I won my last round to try to maybe get Tom into eighth, but and he won his last round, and then he ended up ninth just on tiebreakers. Oh, who did you dream crush? Uh, so I played Bertel Elfgren, and it's okay. it's weird because normally I got paired up against the person with the highest tiebreaks, ah. but he was just in the mix with a ton of other people of his record, and uh, he ended up he ended up getting like tenth. Wow. To, to be fair, even if Tom wasn't in the mix, I was playing on my last round. At 15-0, I was going to play my last round regardless. Sure, sure. How many times are you going to get to go 16-0? My guess is once, and that's happened. Yeah. So I, I, I don't anticipate it happening again. It took a lot of luck, uh, some amount of skill, and... Oh. <laughs> and 16 victories. Yep. So, yeah, you are the only one to ever 16-0 a pro tour still, right? Yeah, Ryan Fuller went 14-0, but he didn't have the two extra rounds to play. So <laughs> not his fault, necessarily. So... Did Owen end up keeping his opening hand, or, or did he mulligan? It looked like... Okay, this is... A, he mulliganed into six lands? Is that what happened? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. mulliganed his seven into six lands. Now, do you keep six lands? He knows the matchup at this point. He's got deck lists. I, yeah, yeah, I don't think you can keep six lands. Wow, you can't keep five spells, or you can't keep four spells either, can you? Nope. And what's over, the number over, where you stop mulliganing? I would three spells. I'd probably keep. I would. I would mulligan this. You know, this hand has two siege rhinos. <laughs> it's got two rhinos, right? Are you going to do better than two rhinos? Like he has to hit runner, runner, runner off the top. Well, two runners. Well, he's got. So that's the thing is, he's got the silver wayfinder. I actually think this hand is a keepable hand. I mean, it's not a good hand. His odds of winning this game are probably what the teens percentage wise, but if they're even that high. If if uh, yeah, because it's not even clear that. That Odin wins the game if he hits two lands. Jerry's draw is pretty good. <laughs> True. Yeah, no, teens is too high. But I think he's right to keep it. Like it's better than his odds of with a with a random three. Yeah, three card hand is not you're not you're not talking about high win percentages there either. All right. Well, yeah, Foundry Street Denizen in the Swift Spear. Plus Berserker. There's the impact tremors. This is just seeing how fast Tom can goldfish. <laughs> Pretty much. Fire breathe, fire breathe, fire breathe is Tom's line. Owen has literally not played a card. Still hasn't drawn a land. He's up well, at to least six Tom, cards. At least, at least Seven cards, know. still no land. Crazy. At least Tom won't know what Owen's playing now. <laughs> <laughs> it, so, worth noting was Owen's opening hand was like, I, it looked like five land Corsair Tassiger, which on the draw against Monored, I think is a pretty easy mulligan. Got it. On the play, I would lean towards keeping it. Skyland plus turn three Corsair is like okay, but on the draw, I don't think that that is good enough. No. You just have to impact the board before turn three, right? Yeah, you, you, I don't think you can account on this going well. Well, if you're going to mulligan to three, I'd rather be in game one because that game is lower percentage to begin with. I'd rather have the best shot in the post board games. Now, because do you think that 61st card would have helped Owen there? <laughs> I, I believe so. I, I think it's it's probably that this deck is a finely tuned machine, and once yeah. you take out the sixty first card, it's like taking out a, you know an, an integral bolt, and the, all the whole machine falls apart. <laughs> Clearly, an extra six drop would have helped in that match, that game. All right, what does he take out? And obviously, there's a lot of good cards in the sideboard to bring in: Erish and Cleric, Drown and Sorrow, Ultimate Price. But what are you what are you taking out? Uh, well, Thoughtseize is a pretty easy one to take out. Uh, in general, Crux of Fate is worse than, you know, three-mana Crux of Fate that scries. Uh, <laughs> I do like Tasker in this matchup, actually. Obzon okay. Charm is also not great. You don't really want to just pay life to draw cards, and it's not like Tom has a bunch of creatures you can kill with it. So, some combination of those cards is, is a lot better. You've got nine pretty good ones and potentially a duress as well i guess you have deck lists if tom has it depends on how creature heavy tom is you might not want duress post board here yeah we can look at tom's deck list uh or we can go look at the match even better we can look at tom's deck list in play <laughs> as he casts his spells this on the other hand is a great hand just Seder wayfinder into tassiger is, is a good start sure it's a little land heavy owen would certainly trade one of his lands for a spell Owen would probably discard two two lands from his hand to draw two uh to draw one card, but it's still a good hand here. Alright, looks like he's looking at uh is it Death Miss Raptor on the scry? It is do you want Death Miss Raptor? It's tough because you want to mill Death Miss Raptor. I don't know if you want to draw it, because you have turn yeah. I think I actually think I would bid it because you have so many better spells to scry into. Because you're gonna play turn two uh Seder Wayfinder, turn three Tassiger. Right. Right. Turn four, you'd rather activate Tassiger than play Death Mistrap, I think. But Owen kept it, so I think he uh, disagrees with that evaluation. And I, I, I'm not super firm about that, but because it's it's pretty close, but my guess is I would have been the Death Mist. Looks like he Owen bricked on. <laughs> See, I would have tried, I wanted to hit the off my Seder Wayfinder, so I would have I would have uh, been the uh, put the Raptor on the bottom. All right. Well, no one drop from Tom, and then the kind of merely dragon fodder on turn two. Oh, hilarious! You would have gotten a land off your wayfinder, right? Because Owen just drew the land. Yeah, I, just made, made very, I just made very good plays right there. Clearly. All right. Now he can what? He can Tassiger, delving everything but the Raptor. Uh, I assume that's nope. the play because you've got a Raptor in hand. So that's what Owen's up to. So, Tom doesn't really have a great play here. He can play 
a heal cutter and cut away that Tassiker's ability to block, but then you get to trade for a token. You spent your turn and you deal four damage or the Wayfinder chumps, but that's less likely. That's reasonable. Neither of those things are great. I mean, Rabble Master doesn't seem like it does a whole lot. I, I guess it lets you attack for two, maybe one if he blocks the Wayfinder. The problem with playing Rabble Master, and Tom is okay with this apparently, is that... Uh, it forces all your goblins to attack, and you've got a lot of other goblins in your deck, so you're going to be running into Owen's creatures the, the next couple turns here. Yeah, Owen trades off Wayfinder and takes one damage. Oh, Perishing Cleric is the draw. That guy seems pretty good on this board. Yeah, I would I would lead by playing Death Mist Raptor. Face down, so you can flip it and get the other one. And then threatening the face to flip, and then next turn you can play Irish and Cleric if things go wrong. Is that Magmatic Chasm? I didn't even notice that in the deck list. Whoa, yeah, n neither did I. <laughs> now he's actually he's upset that his goblins are going to keep suiciding in. He can't build up a giant board full of them. Yeah, because Magmatic Chasm plus Rival Master is kind of a sick combo, because you get to hit him with like a 7-power Rival Master. I could see this turn. Yeah, you, you think I would want to play Hordling Outburst plus Lightning Berserker to set up a Magmatic Chasm, but the problem is, I think you'd rather Lightning Strike the Morph because you don't really want the two Raptors in play. It, I don't also, know. it could be a Den Protector too, from Tom's perspective. Yeah, you could. You can Lightning Strike the the Den Protector and Raptor are actually pretty close, just because there's nothing else in uh, Owen's graveyard right now. Right. But. It doesn't seem too bad to go Lightning Strike the Morph, play a uh, Lightning Berserker go, and maybe do something like that next turn. Though maybe if you don't care about the Morphs because you have the Chasm, you could just run, play as many creatures as possible, next turn attack. You could also Heal Cutter the Tassiger and attack and let the Morph block your Rabble Master and be okay with that. That is a possibility. It's not a super exciting one, but that is that is one way to do it. You lose your Chasm combo though, with the Rabble Master, right? Yeah, Rabble Master Chasm is a combo that represents a lot of damage. This is actually a, a pretty tough play this turn. Two Magmatic Chasms in the sideboard for the herd. It's a tricky spot, Owen. Oh, right, Tom definitely taking his time to think about how he wants to play this. Well. There are very few turns where you have to think quite this much. And so it makes sense. So it looks like he's running Light the Morph. Attack with your goblins for one. I don't think you throw away Rabble Master here. That does not make a whole lot of sense. And then play a uh, Lightning Berserker. Owen drew a, a Corsair. That's actually a pretty good draw. Yes. He's downfall on top of his library. I like Tom playing for Magmatic Chasm here. I think that's the way Tom's going to win this game. He's not hes not in great shape, certainly, especially with that downfall on top and Owen gaining a bunch of life. So my guess is Tom does end up losing this game, but Magmatic Chasm is one of his paths to victory here. Swift Spear is the draw. Yeah, and it's not... Not terrible, but not really what you want, because right now a chasm is. So this turn is uh, hurling outburst is the primary thing you're going to do this turn. So you could well you, let's see if you let's see if you played Swiss Spear and you cast chasm and then you pump like berserker attack for two four five six seven eight nine ten yeah that does not even do all that Doesn't much. Seem like enough. Seems like you want to build up for you want to get hurling outburst goblins onto the table before you chasm. Yeah. So if you Hordling Outburst this turn, you can do what? Hordling Outburst and Swift Spear. Next and then, turn, you can do Chasm. And then Possibly you... The dash so it, but you, Hordling Outburst doesn't even generate, you know, the three goblins, but you lose two goblins this turn. The, the drawback of Rival Master is very real here. <laughs> well, you're already losing the two goblins, though. You can't yeah. change that. Well, like, it's Magmatic Chasm. The Chasm does them. do that, but yes, it's still not great. And Heal Cutter is not really a consideration at this point because you can Heal Cutter a Tassiger, yeah. But so then the Corsair still just devours it. Yeah, Tom is in a tough spot because he also knows that if he passes and Owen draws Hero's Downfall, he's not going to get a hit for seven in with a <laughs> Rabble Master anymore. That's a fine point. That Rabble Master hit, not going to happen. And yeah, Owen is a, a good point. 
Owen is aware that Chasm is a card, I would assume, because he, <laughs> he does get to see the deck lists. Yes. And this is this is the sort of a matchup where if you don't want Chasm in like a matchup like this, I don't really know exactly what it's for. I mean, I guess maybe Green Devotion instead. Yeah, I mean it's it's for Corsair Prefix decks mostly. Yeah. Which seems is like it? this is what you're running into. In a, uh, I, I think there's a bit of a timing tell here. Like the fact that Tom's turns are so complicated actually well, would lead, yeah. might lead Owen to believe there's something weird like Magnetic Chasm going on. It's fact making the math weird and complicated. That is one of the cards that will lead to the most decisions, certainly. All right. Looks like Dash the Heel Cutter. Huh. Play the Swift Spear and charge. Rabble Master token, of course. Looks like the Rabble Master is going to get in there. So, so you make, I assume, Tassiger unable to block. Though, actually, you could make Corsair unable to block if you, and then force Tassiger to either trade for the Rabble Master or eat the, the Heel Cutter. And then the Cleric can, like, get eaten by Rabble Master if you didn't want to block that, and you take three. That's not very much damage. Owen actually has enough life that I think he can... I think he can uh, afford to pay a few life to kill, kill some creatures here. Mm -hmm. Well, Tom's locked in at this point. Heel Cutter has to attack. Yeah. No, I mean, he was debating on the Lightning Berserker. Yeah, I guess... So he made Tasker unable to block. I kind of, like, just block Heel Cutter, block Lightning Berserker. Yeah, you, Owen had a lot of life... This, this play works out kind of in Tom's favor insofar as Tom has Magmatic Chasm in hand, but Owen knows he can just downfall the the Rabble Master next turn. Yeah, Owen winds up taking 8, but down to 14, so... And then Owen gets to play land and then pass with downfall up, and then next turn he can Den Protector get back two Death Strivers, which is a pretty big game. Yes. Downfall as more important than Den Protector? Yeah, Owen agrees. Well, Den Protector's on top of the deck, so... Oh, my bad. Of course. <laughs> the Den will be protected next turn. Next turn. Yeah, given that Owen's at 15 life still, I think this is going pretty well for him. Yeah, no, it, it, it's certainly hard to imagine how Tom stitches 15 points together from here. Kel Hordling out first in hand, so... I mean, all Tom can do is he no longer attacks all goblins. That's the upside. Right. The rabble master did die. The downside is that I would have found a fetch land with Corsair and gets to Den Protector back, like probably just a uh, hero's downfall, and then get back two Death Misdrafters, which is a pretty big <laughs> game. So Den Protector, five mana to make a three-two that's hard to block, and put two three-three Death Touchers into play, and draw a hero's downfall. That's what this card's doing right now? Yeah, I mean, this is why these decks, there's a lot of, there's multiple decks in the format that play four of each card, or at least three to four of each card. I mean, how many tier one decks are there that play Death Mist Draft and Den Protector? There's like four different decks, right? I mean, just different flavors of Devotion, Obdon yeah. Control. Uh, Apparently there's whatever. Dragon Megamorph now. Yeah, I was going to say, whatever Paul's playing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, you know, like the Bant Megamorph deck. There's just a lot of different Megamorph decks. Mega. Which I think is awesome, by the way. I think that Morph was never uh, a mechanic that felt pushed enough for Constructed. It felt like the Morphs were just costed yep. too modestly. Yep. This time, Mega Morph's here to stay. I mean, there there is the real deal. Stratus Dancer, Den Protector, Death Mist Raptor, Irish Shaman. These are all cards that are just quite good. Yeah, I was actually on I was on the development team that did Morph the first time around, and I always kind of wished we made them two, uh, two mana 2-2s two -two instead of three mana 2-2s. Two -two so I was oh, afraid wow. just couldn't get them into Constructed as three mana 2-2s. Two yeah, that, and I mean, this team did a great job. I mean, when Morph came back, I think the the R and D crew did manage to get them into a really interesting spot. Yeah, Exalted Angel was pretty much the Morph that saw play. I guess yeah, Ripcord saw it. a little bit of play. And even besides this whole engine, Owen now has a Tassiger, which it can start getting activated as well. There's Elspeth in his hand. Yeah, I mean, Tom's plan is to build up for one big Magmatic Chasm turn. He's not... But Owen's gaining a consistent life every turn, and then has a hero's downfall, but Owen has to... 
if he's not aware of magmaticasm, he should be because th that's yeah, it's actually that's, in attack for thirteen right now. Like it's not yeah. that far away, right? Two, Lightning four, breathe. Four, six, nine, twelve. I have, I have twelve here. Three, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then oh, it's Swift Spear. I was thinking it was Berserker. Yeah. You're right, it's twelve. I thought it was a Berserker, and so I was fire breathing it in my head. Still, twelve is yeah, twelve is the number. It's not bad. It does mean that there's there. I don't think Tom has any any cards he can draw that like win the game, win him the game this turn, especially given that Hero's down falls up. But it's sure. the sort of thing where he can chasm attack Owen down to like five, and then or I guess Owen does downfall a two power creature. So attack Owen down to seven, and then next turn hope to just attack and cast a burn spell or draw another chasm right. or just attack. You know. I like yeah. Owen getting a little aggressive here. A lot of Tom's lines involve Owen being unable to block anyway. Mm -hmm. So Tom does choose to chump here. Interesting. Which indicates to me that he wants to... I guess if, if we count up Owen's power, Owen has 7, 10, 16. So yeah, Tom now put himself to not being dead on the counter swing. Yeah, smart. So now Tom's going to cast... power for Owen and Tom's at 17. Here is the Magmatic Chasm. I assume Owen downfalls the Swift Spear. Tom gets to attack for nine, putting Owen down to eight with a Lightning Strike in hand, which does mean that Owen won't necessarily be able to attack back on his next turn. And if Tom draws another Burn Spell or another Chasm, he's got a decent shot. It's got to be Swift Spear. Yeah, it's just the best creature in play. And Tom has another card in hand, so if you kill Zergo yeah. and Tom's other card is a spell, then... You like a lightning strike? Yes. <laughs> so Owen falls to eight. Magmatic Chasm actually do it? Like, the last... Does Tom have an out? It seems like he's on a one-outer. The, the other copy of Magmatic Chasm... Deals what? Five, six, seven? Deals nine. Well, it looks like Owen's attacking, in which case Tom's attack puts Owen down to f like five, four. Oh no, I guess Tom has Elspeth, or Owen plays Elspeth this turn, can block six things, and Tom has eight things, so Tom does two to Owen. So Owen needs to put him to attack Stoke. with yeah, one less, so he doesn't die to Stoke. Right now, Owen doesn't die to Stoke, so okay. Tom has to draw a Magmatic Chasm to win the game. And if he doesn't, I think he, he just loses, because Owen's drawing Siege Rhino. Yeah, here comes Elspeth. Make three tokens. So Tom's got one draw phase. Magmatic Chasm wins it. We think that's the only thing that wins it, though. That's what it looks like. You can strike... You can strike Owen down to six. And... Yes, it does not quite really do it. Seven is not nine. So now Tom's gonna gonna sit there and hope he draws a burn spell. But seizure Rhino means that Owen needs or Tom needs a five point burn spell, which again maybe just another turn for Chasm. But I, I assume Tom's gonna have to make a couple chump blocks here. He knows that there's a seizure Rhino in Owen's hand, and Owen's gonna draw a, or be able to play a land with Corsairs, so who's gonna get an additional life. Hmm. Owen's just like yeah. I've got way more than lethal. You're going to have to block. Forcing you to block is the same thing as leaving a guy on defense from preserving my own life total's point of view. But this just forces all the all the chumps to happen. Pretty smart. Yeah, the problem is sometimes that doesn't line up if, if your opponent has enough life that they can take a hit of a bunch of the creatures. But in this <laughs> case, turn, though. Tom, yeah, Tom can't do that, especially given that Elspeth is about to just make more tokens. Right, right. Elspeth means there are three blockers for Owen. Or four with the Siege Rhino. Yeah. So Tom is not going to get two draw steps here. He's going to get exactly one. And Chasm's not going to do it. He doesn't have a five-point burn spell, or six-point burn spell, rather. So this is going to be tough. Stoke Strike Strike is ten? Does that add up? Well, Owen's about he to be at 13 at the end of this turn. Oh, he hasn't played the land for Corsair yet. And Siege Rhino. All right, fine. If Tom wasn't watching the top of Owen's deck, then he's got might think he's got a chance. <laughs> True, I, I suspect uh, Tom is though. One of the you I know, do. 
course, it's a great card, but obviously your opponent's going to be paying attention to the cards you're drawing off of it. Wow, Zergo even got in a block. It's hard to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Courser. The light from the Courser has been the difference. I went ahead and found that Courser top one. Yep, yeah, frequently is, and in this case, certainly was. Dramoka's command, it can stop a burn spell too. Yeah. Tom blocks that he would go down to four, so that the Seed Rhino wouldn't be lethal. Preserved as much material as he could. Hard but, to imagine what this draw phase could be, though. Yeah, even a Chasm doesn't do it. Tom's a point short on, on Chasm as well. Chasm plus strike. Yeah, Stoke is going to drop Owen to nine. There's two, three, four, five power worth of creatures in play. Strike drops Owen to six. Chasm will be one point short. Stoke the Flames is two points short. Wow. This so is a super close. close game. Super close game, but Owen forces game three. Yeah, we had a super fast blowout of a game in game one. Owen literally never found a land. Well, he found six lands in a six-card hand, but didn't keep that one. No lands in his five or his four. Never played a land in the game. That one... A little more interesting. Yeah, that was that was a very close game. Owen didn't have a very spell-heavy draw, but Tasker did a pretty good job of, at the very least, forcing uh, Tom to keep dashing out Heel Cutter. Mm -hmm. And Rabble Master had a couple awkward turns where I just sent some goblins into their death. So. Now, game three, Tom gets to be on the play. That's kind of a big deal here, right? It is, but if Owen has, like, turn two... Uh, Erish and Cleric in the turn three, like, Drown in Sorrow? That, that's a huge hand. <laughs> Ooh, looks like Owen Mulligan again, but Tom's hand is not good. Owen's six-card hand is not spectacular, but I think is a keepable six. Tom's hand is on a pretty low end of sevens. I actually don't... Actually, looks like Owen's hand is seven and is actually quite good. I see right now. <laughs> Adding that one card changed things a bit, did it? Oh, yeah. Whereas Tom's hand, I mean, he's got Roast and, and Stoke. He can kill some things, but he doesn't have any pressure. If Tom bricks on this yeah. first draw, then he's attacking for one and saying go on turn two. And that's that's a fairly lame turn two when it comes to, you know, actually reducing Owen's life total to zero. Like, Tom needs to do more than that to win the game before Owen does something. Yeah, four Ooh. land, three spells to keep. Oh, wow, Erich and Claire. Tom has played this deck a lot more than I have, so I get, I'll defer to his judgment. But if if that is a keepable hand, it's like on, in like the bottom ten percent of keepable hands. So hands you would still keep, but yep. you, you, you know, not hand. There's definitely not good. Owen scryed into a cleric too, which gives him a two drop, which is actually kind of interesting. He can't play two drop and necessarily play a courser next turn. He's got one untapped land. He has to use it judiciously. <laughs> Given what Tom has in play, I kind of like playing a tap land, but you you don't know what Tom's hand is. If he plays a Rabble Master next turn, which is very possible given that he kept a hand with no two drop or one drop, then playing Cleric plays around a Rabble Master a lot better, so it makes sense that Owen would play a Cleric on turn two. If you could see Tom's hand, he would not play it, but given that he does not have access to that information, it makes sense. There is the Cleric. One's back up to 20. Second roast to enters Tom's hand. Yeah. yeah. You're pretty, you're pretty happy if you're Owen at this point. Yeah, oh, for sure. He spends a card killing half my Erish and Cleric. You, I already got the three life out of it. So yeah, sign me up. And it doesn't add anything to the board. And then you play uh, Temple here. To, you hope to find an untapped land to play Siege Rhino. But honestly, if you just have to play Corsair next turn, that's not the end of the world. And the second Siege Rhino means you're going to live long enough to cast that Elspeth. Tom is, meanwhile, attacking for one. He could Stoke here to attack for additional one point plus the Stoke, which is not that bad. I mean, it's not a it's not a play you're happy about, but it might be that Tom needs to do something here because he's got double Stoke in hand. It looks like he's not interested, though. Comes in to play tap land, but yeah, Courser... Plus the scry land seems just fine here. And now what? Tom should stoke the courser? Roast to the courser after he untaps? 
problem is you don't really want to stoke anything but Owen. But right. if you roast the Corsair and then no one plays a Siege Runner, like, what, what are you going to do? I think you have to just stoke the Corsair and just hope to draw a Rabble Master or some other, like, permanent source of damage. Tom's big problem this game is that he does has never had a way to deal consistent amounts of damage. Yeah, Owen at 18. And Owen deciding now whether he wants to scry, it looks like he's just going to play the Sandstep Citadel. That makes a yep. lot more sense. I mean, it's not like his hand needs anything right now. He's set for the next couple of turns. He's actually set for the next three turns. Owen gets to... Turn four it. on the draw, and he's got 18 life to work with still. And Tom has very few cards in his hand. I mean, he's going to stoke the Courser here, untap. Really needs to draw threat this turn. Ugh, land number six is not what he wanted. <laughs> Owen's made the finals both times he's played Obzon. It's true. Both sides of it, too. Obzon aggro is what he won with. Yep. Winning two weeks. I think it. I think if you win two different weeks, it's pretty hard to miss top three. Right. I mean, he'll he'll take first place by a good bit if he manages to win the whole week. Especially given that uh, Paul and Josh, the other two, are not like ahead right now. You know, they're right. right. I mean, Owen is. Uh, I guess Jerry lost, right? So Owen's yeah. already in first place. He was second, five points behind Jerry coming into this week. Jerry's already lost. Owen's already got one win. So he's already in first place. If he puts this win, a finals win, and a five-point bonus, he's looking pretty good for playoffs. Yeah, and here Tom rose to the siege round, attacked for two, trying to vainly make up for Owen's life gain, drew a magmatic chasm with <laughs> one creature in play, and still has a stoke, has more lands in play than Owen does on turn six. So <laughs> I'm not naming things that are good for Mono Red, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> Another win for Tom, though. I mean, he's uh, he keeps picking up wins here and there, you know? He's yeah. up to 40 points without any of the bonuses for making the finals. He's just, you know, goes on one, picks up his points, and hangs out right on the right on the edge of contention, of playoff contention, right in the middle of the yeah. pack. And cutting to three of eight does mean that you don't have to, like, have an insane record to do that. Right, exactly. I mean, there's kind of five contenders right now and three guys who have fallen by the wayside. Although, with four weeks left, I don't think anybody's even close to eliminated. There's just three guys that are going to need to put up a weak win just to get back in it. Next week, by the way, Modern. Yeah. In honor of the Giant Grand Prix. Are you signing cards? I see you looking down. Are you, You're signing tokens, aren't you? Well, their tokens aren't going to sign themselves. <laughs> Funny. Turn the camera off. He starts multi. -tap. It is convenient that we don't have cameras this week. I didn't I didn't I didn't rig this, but <laughs> if we had a camera, I would not be doing this. Uh, <laughs> luckily I, I can I I am used to double queuing and uh you know I was I'm able to handle the match as well. But uh I, I do think that the modern week is gonna be really interesting because it gives us a taste of what a modern super league may look like. And I think so trying to see what that you know, basically yep. kind of like a preview, because obviously like it's not off the table to do a modern Super League at some point or a legacy one, but you know, yeah. having a week of modern will help that. I'm definitely curious to see how pe what people come up with. I'm curious to see how popular the show is next week. So that's an interesting test case. And I mean, in all hype about the Modern Masters weekend coming up next weekend, it's just going to be a crazy weekend full of magic. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so here, Tom had to use Magmatic Chasm plus Stoke the Flames plus his attack to kill an Elspeth. Let's just say that's also not a, a, a winning a win. Yeah, I mean, you do what you can. Do what you have to. But yeah, Owen is more removal spells than Tom has creatures. And yeah, Tom has seen enough. So Owen Turnwald through to the finals. And Ob's some, on control. Something uh, Efro noted earlier in the chat is uh, Josh's matchup against Paul may be the most lopsided matchup we've seen in the Super League so far. Really? Paul just has very few ways to stop Josh from going off, and Dragon Lords certainly aren't going to get it done. Interesting. All right. Well, we're not going to try to do an interview. Our audio, de our audio desync makes that just a miserable experience. So we are going to take a quick break. We will be right back with Josh Utter-Layton taking on Paul Chion. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> 